Steve Higgins and this is my holiday book bag for 2019. And these are the four books I've taken on holiday to read and review. I started my holiday reading this book, Honourable Men, My Life in the CIA by William Colby. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've been looking forward to reading it for quite a while since finding it on the shelves of a second-hand bookshop. The forward to the book was pretty interesting. Colby, the director of the CIA, is summoned to Washington to find himself fired by President Ford. Ford, of course, is seeking to move the CIA on from the revelations of the Nixon-Watergate era. Colby then leaps back in time to tell us of his exploits in World War II with the OSS, the forerunner of the CIA. That chapter seems to be very much, I did this, and then I did that, and then I did this. And I kind of lost interest, and I have to say I put the book down in favour of something more interesting. Looking at the reviews on Goodreads, they were all pretty encouraging. So when I have the time, I think I'll have to try and finish the book off. These days, I must be rather impatient. Sometimes a good book takes time to deliver, while others are enjoyable almost from the very first page. Now, this was a book that I enjoyed almost straight away. I knew I liked it immediately. I knew I liked Rick's writing style, and I knew instinctively that this was going to be a good read. Rick Stein is famous as a chef on Restaurateur, as many TV shows about cookery, and in particular cooking fish, have made him very popular. In this book, in this memoir, I should say, he talks nostalgically about his early life and all the memories he links with food, dishes from his youth, and also with music. Uh, and he talks about various tracks that he loves and which remind him of his early life. It is, particularly the first half of the book, a free-talking adventure down memory lane, taking in all sorts of places, moods, food, tastes and music as he does so. He paints a nostalgic and warm picture of his early life, uh, though sadly his father committed suicide when Rick was only 18. He tells about the suicide in short bursts throughout the book. In fact, at first he doesn't even mention it, the death was a suicide. I can imagine it was pretty hard to write about, and maybe Rick himself found some solace as he spoke about his father. Anyway, I found myself liking Rick very much and left the book thinking that Rick thinks pretty much just like I do, which is perhaps one of the reasons I like the book as much as I did. This next book is a fascinating and detailed look at the 1995 murder trial of former US football player OJ Simpson, who was accused of murdering his ex-wife Nicole and her friend Ron Goldman. The pair were murdered outside Nicole's house in the Brentwood area of Los Angeles. Footprints uh, were found leading away from the scene, bloody footprints, uh, Simpson's car, blood matches. Um, there was even a low-speed police pursuit of Simpson that was broadcast live live on TV bringing, bringing in apparently 95 million viewers but the defense team diverted attention away from all the evidence and brought the whole issue down to race. I remember this was a time where Rodney King, a black motorist, had been beaten up by white police officers. They'd been acquitted at a trial despite the fact that it, the whole incident was recorded live on video. A fabulous book very, very interesting and detailed. An interesting look at the way the American legal system works. I'm a big fan of the TV series MASH, a very big fan. And I didn't realise until recently that the TV show and the feature film were based on this book. Richard Hooker was a surgeon in a mobile hospital unit in the Korean War and based this book on his own experiences. The book introduces all the familiar characters from the TV show, Hawkeye, Trapper John, Colonel Blake, Radar and so on. And a lot of the scenarios from the TV series had their basis in this book. The thing is, if this was a book written after the TV series and not before, I'd say the writer hadn't quite caught the spirit of the TV show, which seemed to bring all those elements of war, tragedy and humour together so expertly. The book is good, quite good in fact, but the TV series was epic, absolutely outstanding, and this book suffers a little because I caught the TV show first. A good book, but not, not quite as good as the TV show.